Ooh. Hold on. Okay, it is dark. It's dark in here. Oh, and it's live on Facebook. Yeah, I ran ahead and did the live already. Oh, I like your hair. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I don't know why it's so dark in here. It does look dark. This room is dark though. Let's see. And then if I turn this light on, it's like a glare. Hmm. That's crazy. Oh, it's um the light usually comes from the computer. There it goes. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Much better. It's the screen that usually gives me the light. I'm like, why is it so dark right now? Well, I guess while we wait on our millennial, we can... um. Yeah, she's logging on now. She asked me what was the meeting password. But, oh, okay. Yeah. What were you getting ready to say? I was going to say we can just update the audience on, um, you know, what's going on. Um, and let everyone know that tomorrow is Super Series Tuesday. And um, we're going to be hearing it from a developers. A well, we're going to have a conversation with the developers. So... Super excited about that. Um, so of course, tune in tomorrow for Super Series Tuesday, where we can get a, a highlight overview of um, development. So that'll be pretty exciting. I did um, have a conversation with them earlier today. Um, and we're gonna have the president of NAREB's UDC on the line. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be well. We're able to tap into all of the affiliates of NAREB, which makes this, this house in a car platform very unique that mm -hmm. we get to work with all of the affiliates. And then we'll have the affiliate of Women's Council um, on for our, oh my goodness, for our final series, because that's upcoming. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been a great series. I, I have enjoyed all of the panelists and the knowledge that we have been receiving, especially the, the Super Series Tuesday is amazing. So I, I'm excited for what House in the Car has in store for our next series. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we are waiting on our millennial to join. She is joining shortly. And this is Millennial Monday, guys. So if you are just now tuning in and you haven't been tuned in for the last how, how many weeks have we been four doing weeks. this? Four weeks. Four weeks. This so is week. You, this is week five, actually. This yes, is the so, fifth week. <laughs> yes. If you have not been tuning in, Millennial Mondays is our weekly chat with with our millennials who have not yet purchased, but are in a position to purchase homes, but they have had barriers or they just have decided not to for many different reasons. And what I've been learning from these millennials is they really like to plan. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. So there's a lot of planning involved. So we will be discussing that with our millennial as she joins the call very shortly.
Oh, Tiffany Booker says hello. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Janae. Yeah, I was um, and actually that was one of the panelists for tomorrow, wanting to make sure that they had all the information for tomorrow. So again, just you know, be about that in the second um, series of Super Series Tuesday is scheduled to launch. But I want to tell everyone that we're going to do like a little reunion in between um, for our break. We're going to. Oh, is it going to be like the Housewives reunion? Kind of, no, but not messy. It won't no be, drama, no, no drama. No shade. There won't be a need to pull out the tea. Not a, we, no actually, we're not going to be sharing the tea. However, um, it won't be that type. So yes, it will be. It it will be very different. <laughs> but definitely, and so we're going to be looking forward to that. And then we're going to launch the second series for Super Series Tuesday for everyone. Up oh, there she goes. Hey, Natasha. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I am awesome. Awesome. Hi, Natasha. Hi. <laughs> so good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to Millennial Monday. We would like to thank you guys for joining us via Facebook Live, for joining us for our Millennial Monday. And as Stephanie and I stated earlier, this is the fifth session of Millennial Monday. And I'd like to turn it over to our host, Madam Stephanie Milburn. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Stephanie Milburn. I am the campaign manager for House in the Car. And today we would like to introduce our millennial, which is one of my clients. Uh, shout out to Stephen Coleman, who referred her. So Natasha, go ahead and introduce yourself. So my name is Natasha Triplett. Um, I am a financial coach here in Houston, and I'm also an assistant principal. Uh, and I'm, I'm really happy to be in the process of looking for my very first home here in Houston. And Stephanie has done a great job with helping me navigate the system and really understand everything better. Natasha, tell everyone how old you are and where you're from. Okay, so I am 31 years old, um, and I am from Memphis, Tennessee. Awesome, awesome. So what brings you to Texas? So I, uh, I started in education in Knoxville, and then I moved to Beijing, China, where I taught for three years. And so I always knew that I wanted to eventually move to Texas, but really I just, I just applied for so many jobs while I was in China. And so I ended up landing in Houston mm -hmm. uh, out of all places. And so uh, I really initially came for work. Well, congratulations on coming to Texas for work. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank welcome. You, thank you. Welcome yeah, to Texas. Yeah, I've been here for three years now. Hour. Awesome. Thank so you. I know that you were saying that you're in the process. So Natasha is currently in the process of, um, well, really, she's deciding on some things right now. So we've had several calls. And I love this about millennials. I, we were just saying that they like to plan. So Natasha and I have had several calls just in the planning stages of where she wants to, uh, the area of town, also which lender that she wants to use. So lenders, if you're listening, here's an opportunity. If you want to reach out to us, we would like to know what you have in store for your future home buyers, what programs you have available, what are your restrictions or guidelines. I know some things have changed uh, due to COVID-19. So if, if you're listening lenders, please give us a shout. So Natasha, let's talk about some of the reasons why you have not purchased just yet. Well, um, the biggest thing is uh, initially when I was going to go in the process of looking for a home last summer, I kind of had just some medical things happening. So I just kind of waited. Um, but the, the crazy thing is my rent went up 
uh, it skyrocketed. And so uh, over the past three years, my rent has went up maybe $300. So the amount that I've been paying, I've it just kind of pushed me to want to start looking for uh, a house. But the reason why I really haven't necessarily closed on anything or decided on anything yet is because I'm just really trying to find the best thing to fit me. And I just don't want to rush into a, a, just any house. I was, I was talking to somebody today, actually, and I was saying, I just want something that when I walk in, I actually love it. And so that's why I'm very particular about the different things that I've been looking yeah. at. But I'm really looking for the right program, honestly, to fit my my uh my background and everything so like you said stephanie if somebody out there has a great program we're we're open to hearing about it <laughs> yeah yes also new construction um is one thing that natasha is thinking about doing so uh any new construction builders if you're out there give me a call email and we would love to hear from you we're gonna um, talk about some more um options for her later on this evening so we would love to hear from you uh natasha what things have you done to prepare yourself um, other than just making this decision saying, okay, you know what, I'm ready now because I'm paying this rent is not going to get it. Okay, well, um, one thing that I have done is I've just looked on HAR because it's just given me a, a great opportunity to just see the variety of homes from the different price ranges for, for me to be able to see exactly what I want, what I, what I don't necessarily want in the house. So I've, I started there. Um, I have looked up different lenders and um, or the, the different programs and what they have to offer. And so uh, with, with Stephanie, I've had an opportunity to kind of compare, compare and contrast the different opportunities. Um, and then I've also, I've, I've kind of just, ex just explored, just did my own research on the different um, builders. So I've looked up the different builders to kind of see some um, some homes that I look that I actually am interested in, and then I recently even drove around and kind of looked at some of the areas. I did that today, Stephanie. By the way, uh, <laughs> I drove around and I looked at some of the areas that she told me about, just to kind of get more of a visual. Because you know, in the time of Zoom and uh, with everything with the quarantine, yeah, we really haven't been able to really travel around. And so today was my day to kind of just go and look and kind of see what are some things that I really physically like outside of just seeing everything online. So I mentioned um, Stephen Coleman referred you. How have you prepared yourself financially? And, and you can mention who Stephen is to you. Oh, it froze. I was wondering if it was just me. <laughs> no, I don't know. Natasha, you're frozen. Okay. So I know when I first um, had conversations with Natasha, she let me know that uh, they had been going over some numbers for her because I know Stephen um, is also one of her uh, financial uh, planners and helps mm -hmm. her with her finances. And um, so they came to me, you know, already knowing, okay, you know what, based on the research that I've done and based on my financial status, then she's looking for a home in the 250 and below range. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which is ultimately in Houston, 250 is an average sales price. So with that being said, that kind of goes back to what we talked about during Realtors Week and how your millennial buyer is not the same as your previous first time home buyer where they were low to moderate. There she goes, she's back. I'm back. Yeah. Hey. My screen froze. I, I don't know exactly I don't know exactly what happened, but I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. We were just discussing um when I first uh, met you when we first talked you mentioned that you and Stephen had gone over some numbers and that you you know did your research and you figured that purchasing a home within a 250 and below range is going to be where you're comfortable. So talk about how, how you guys came up with that. Okay. Well, um, so even though I'm a financial coach, every financial coach needs a financial coach. And mm -hmm. so Stephen Coleman is definitely my, uh, my financial advisor when it comes to things like that. And so I sat down with him and we, we talked about how um, just exactly my, my month to uh, my, 
well, my income to debt ratio. And so we, we looked at that. We, we looked at the money that I was bringing in. We kind of saw exactly what would be comfortable for me to be paying, uh, even comparing it to my current rent for my, um, for my apartment. We just kind of just played with the numbers and he gave me a, a good visual of the range that I needed to really stay in just to be living comfortably because the, the one thing that I didn't want to do was to end up moving in a house and to um, to just really not be in the, the right financial situation. And so um, I guess the advice that I would give is definitely make sure that you're talking to your your financial uh, your financial advisor when it comes to purchasing purchasing in house too because it just gives you the opportunity to just make the right decisions mm -hmm. uh, and then it also gives you the opportunity to, to really lay down all of your expenses um of course i had already done that but it, it did just really put me in a position to be able to just, uh, just really see okay what is the range and then it, then as far as choosing houses it allowed me to narrow my search down too so i got a chance to see okay between this amount and this amount these are the types of houses that I'll be able to qualify for. Now, I, I know I will most likely qualify for more than what my projected range is, but I just had to make a decision to just see what would be the most comfortable amount, uh, even though I will qualify for more. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's a good idea because a lot of times uh, we may go, go out there and, you know, we're approved for three, four hundred thousand dollars. But just because you're approved for that amount does not mean that that's your affordability and mm -hmm. where you're going to be comfortable as far as sustaining that property and mm -hmm. your way of life. So if mm -hmm. you have a certain lifestyle that you live in, and I know right now you live in the um, Edo area, and I know that's a you know good millennial uh, area. So it, as far as the convenience is concerned, um, how how important is the convenience uh, of the location for you? Mm -hmm. So, um, for me, location is everything when it comes to convenience, because I believe in work-life balance, and I believe in, you know, being in an area where you can easily commute to places, whether if it's downtown, the medical center, all those different areas, um, um, midtown, and so I kind of, when within my search, I've been trying to see with the traffic in Houston, how long is it going to take for me to get to from point A to point B? And mm -hmm. so um, that it's very important to me because um, I'm actually so I actually work in the Edo area, but I live in a medical center area. And so so just um, thinking about that and the commute and how long it will take for me, that's been factoring in. I've been factoring that in as I've been looking for a house. But the, the, re the reality of it is. An apartment is always going to be more convenient when it comes to where you work because you know apartments are everywhere but the perfect house might be a little bit uh far out compared to where you work and so i've also had to change my mindset when it comes to that because my dream house might not be right down the street from my job yeah <laughs> so yeah i've really been thinking about that as well so in, in some of the reading and research that we've been doing we've come across a statement that the millennial home buyer would delay home purchase, their home purchase for the ideal property. How true would you say that is for you? Well, I think it's a combination. So, I mean, I do have my ideal property in mind. However, I do know that this is my first home. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I do know that this is my first home. And so with that being said, my first home might be partially my ideal property but eventually I know that I'll probably get another home and so I'm, I don't think that I'm necessarily as oh my gosh I have to have every little thing right now because when I when I think about it my next home might not necessarily be in the same price range it might be in a higher price range depending on how many years it is from now um, and so I think within this first search though I do have some must-haves um, and so as I'm looking for houses and things like that um, I will be looking for my must-haves in, in that area. But um, because my lease is up in July and I, I really don't want to renew my lease, I am going to make sure that I have my things in, in order <laughs> yeah. so that I can close on something between now and then. Okay. Okay. I just want to give a shout out to our national president, Danielle Williams. He is watching uh, this segment. So shout out to 
Danielle Williams for coming up with Housed in the Car, and we welcome you to Millennial Monday. So Natasha, what advice other than having a financial coach would you give to other millennials who have not yet purchased but are positioned to purchase a home? Um, well, the first thing is savings is very important. So just making sure that you are uh, just saving properly, uh, leading up to whenever your lease is up or whenever you're ready to move into a house. Um, because at the end of the day, you might have a closing cost or you might have money that you need to put down. So it's very important to have money in place for that. Uh, the second thing is to ensure that your credit is good. Um, I've always been a, a big a big person on not having lingering credit card bills and debt. Mm -hmm. um, I pay my, if I, if I use my credit card in the month, I pay it off within the same month because I don't want it to accumulate any interest and I don't want to have uh, just debt up to here. Um, and then also really get a realtor that that's working with you um, as a, as a partnership, because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's so easy to just get a realtor that wants to make a sale. But once you actually get somebody who's willing to work with you and y'all are working together and you are bouncing ideas off of each other, then it makes the process a little bit easier because I was actually talking to Steven today and I told him, I said, you know, when it comes to some of these different, um, the different programs and things, you know, it could be very difficult to understand them, you know, because you have percentage rates and you have this amount of closing costs and like different things. But when you have somebody that will actually break it down for you and really help you understand what's best for you while you're in the process and it does make the situation easier. So definitely millennials, make sure that you're saving your money, that you have your credit score up and that you are working with somebody that's really, really good and supportive during the process. Mm -hmm. That is awesome advice. And you mentioned Steven. So he's watching. I just saw that Stephen Coleman is watching. <laughs> so shout out to Steven. <laughs> And Madam Letitia, do you have any questions for Natasha? No, actually, I don't. Thank you so very much, Natasha, for joining us. How exciting. Um, I've heard some valuable things that we'll make sure that we share with other millennials as well, ensuring that the professional that you have selected is working for you on your behalf. Um, and, and that is meeting those needs, whatever those needs are. You've identified several of those items that you are that are requirements for you in particular. And um, Stephanie is doing an amazing job at ensuring that those needs are met. And the other thing that you said that you're working with a financial advisor, financial coach. So you came in already knowing what it is that you would be able to qualify for and how in the direction of your home ownership. So I think that that's valuable. We teach all the time knowing your budget, but you've taken budget to the to a whole new level. And I definitely commend you for that. Um, we are super excited to hear that anytime someone's taking their, their future into their own hands, I do definitely think that that's a, an amazing thing. I think that that is something that um, should definitely be talked about more often um, than it is at this present time. Um, wanted to also kind of point out that you made mention of convenience. So mm -hmm. that is, um, and, and, and I would probably say, you know, we talk about, because Millennial Monday is to discuss those barriers and convenience is in some way, shape or form, maybe not for everyone else, but it's definitely a barrier to home ownership for the millennial group. You said work-life balance, which a lot of the other groups failed at work-life balance. And I think that the millennial group is doing an awesome job at ensuring that they uphold that work-life balance and keeping that time off the road will definitely definitely contribute to having true work-life balance. So that kind of segues into our tomorrow, where tomorrow we will be discussing convenience and we'll be able to hear some of that information from developers. And hopefully, Natasha, you'll be able to tune in. Um, I know that you're considering new construction and yes. um, maybe those developers can sh shed some light on some of the things that they look at when making a decision on which community to choose and how that impacts the millennial home buyer. Yes, um, I don't definitely. have anything else. 
Well, you heard it here first, guys. Millennial Mondays is always bringing you some information, tips, and tricks for our millennial buyers. So thank you, Natasha, for joining us today. We thank you for all of the knowledge that you have brought to us. We thank you for sharing your story. So one thing that she did say, and, and Letitia also mentioned it, um, that financial coach is very important. I think everyone should grab a financial coach, discuss your budget. That way you will know coming into the home buyer process where you're, you know, where you're comfortable and where you stand. So that's one thing that's very important. And I love working with the millennial buyers because they know exactly what they want. <laughs> they know what they want. They know how to get it. And they know, uh, just like we talked to our millennial buyer on Wednesday, I love that he said, um, knowing what you don't know. So if you don't know, I love the fact that she said work with a professional. So work with the professional guys, make sure that you are using the services that are there for you when working with a realtor. Um, you know, typically that that cost does not come out of the buyer's pocket, guys. So why not have somebody working on your behalf at all times. So don't go into the home buyer process without that professional with you. Again, right. tune in tomorrow. We will be here again at three o'clock for Super Series Tuesday and back again on Wednesday for Home Ownership Changed My Life. Thank you for tuning in to Millennial Mondays. Thank you, Realtors. Have a great Thank one. You. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.